This is another installment of C's Listening Room. Uh, a couple videos ago, I discussed the Pride Tiger CD that I had bought at a record store in Windsor, Ontario. And now, I'm going to talk a little bit about its neighbor, by which I mean it was located just below it on the shelf. So you had Pride Tiger, and then right below it you had Prism, of course. Uh, pr this is a 1979 release. Uh, it's called Armageddon. And let me tell you, this is a 1979 album. Disclosure. I'm not big on the year 1979. I was born that year, yeah, so I should be very biased towards it. I, I should think that it's the greatest year ever. I should think that no year was better than 1979. But I don't think when it came to entertainment and culture that 79 was a particularly good year. I think it was kind of one of those lost years that you just kind of shut the door on and, and just leave it in the past. Now, one of my favorite shows growing up was The Dukes of Hazard. That show debuted in 79. That was the very first year that that show was on TV. So that was something good that came out of, of, uh, of 1979. I still like that show. I've got most of the seasons on DVD. Uh, so anytime I want to watch Bumbling Sheriffs or, or Moonshiners or whatever, I can just watch a funny episode of Dukes of Hazzard and get a laugh out of that. That was a good show. That came out in 79. But I looked at the list of the top music hits of 79, and there wasn't a single song on there I particularly liked. So I don't think that it was a really good year. And it was, it was really pretty much dead center in the disco era. Uh, we're kind of at the end of the disco era. But it was a disco year. And I think at that time, uh, Canada was really just trying to find another rock act to promote and be proud of. And I think that's where Prism kind of came in. I think it was one of those groups that got signed because, you know, Rush made it, Triumph came out. We discussed them on an earlier video. Uh, they were They were already out now. So I think Canada was on this roll where they said, okay, let's try to get another band signed and, and get them out there, rush them to market and, and whatnot. So I think that's where Prism came in. I think there was just this hunger in Canada for another national act that they could promote, sign, um, and just kind of get out there for people to, to hear. This is a dated album. And I, it's interesting because as, as badly dated as it is, it actually is not that bad. Um, but it's got some hard rock guitar, but it's mixed with a lot of keyboard. I think there's an unnecessary amount of keyboard in this, uh, in this music. I think they were trying to make something that sounded modern and would hopefully sound just as contemporary three or four years down the road as it did in 79. But I don't think it really worked. I don't know if this was actually sold in the U.S. It probably was like in small numbers on vinyl. Um, but this is primarily a Canadian release. And interesting point is that there are a couple songs on there written by Brian Adams. That Brian Adams. The Summer of 69 Brian Adams. Actually a very prolific songwriter. He, uh, he's written for a lot of artists. And this is back in 79. He was already writing back then and contributing songs to this album. I think there are about three tracks on here that he uh, contributed to. That he either co-wrote or entirely wrote. Um, there's one song on here, uh, Night to Remember, that I still hear on a Canadian uh, AM gold station that we have here. It's an AM station. It plays kind of the, the AM era pop hits. Um, they still play that one. I guess probably throughout Canada that's still 
that's still being heard. That's kind of a yacht rock song. It's it's a ballad. It's kind of soft. It's it, it's basically your late seventies yacht rock music, but the rest of it's kind of keyboard rock, kind of hard rock, but maybe not really my definition of hard rock. But I think it would probably fall in that category. But um, as I said, a lot of keyboards now. This is, I mean, this is basically uh, what Canadian contemporary rock music was sounding like in 79. I would say this is what a lot of bands are sounding. I, I, I wouldn't even uh, restrict this to Canada. This is this is like a 1979 album, and it, it is just dated. First of all, let's look at this cover. There's two different things going on here. Here at the bottom, we've got the actual prism, which is the band's name. So they've got like an image of a prism. And then up on top, it's got the band's logo, which also has this prism with the rainbow uh, in the middle there. Very, very dated, very old-fashioned. Just a, a, again, a total 1979 image. But for some reason, they've also got a street scene. It looks like it's out of the out of a front windshield or whatever. You can see some headlights right here going towards the viewer. And there's some taillight streams there. Some lit up buildings along the side of the road. I don't really know what they were going for on this one. And truth be told, I don't know if the band really knew what they were going for with this whole album. Uh, the image just, it doesn't really sell the album, and I don't think it really, I, I think maybe you get an idea as to what this might be when you look at the, the band's logo. It is kind of that late 70s, soft rock, rock and roll, uh, album-oriented rock type thing. I, I guess the logo fits the band fairly well but the 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 street scene I, I i think just does nothing to to describe or explain what the music sounds like uh inside you basically just get a lyric book this is this is from the lp age this is from the vinyl age so this was really made for an lp um they probably just printed the lyrics on the back jacket of the album when it came out uh they didn't really add anything to the cd version this probably was not even sold on cd in the u.s very basic um and then on the back you've got the same prism logo that you see on the front so that very low budget extreme just not a high budget and it sounds like the band really didn't have a lot of inspiration. It sounds like they just kind of wanted to come up with something that they could put out, rush to the market, and hopefully cash in on. It's, to me, a desperate attempt by a record label. Who is the record label anyway? Uh, looks like it's EMI. EMI Music Canada. Sounds like it was just a desperate attempt to get something out there to to try to either cash in on or try to to help the Canadian music scene a little bit. And despite all this, I don't think it's even that bad. It's very dated. It's very it's not something that's going to find new fans. People are not going to rediscover this album and like it. I think most people who listen to this are going to say this is just outdated this is old-fashioned this is this is way behind the times most people that listen to this are not going to want to rush out and buy the album if they if they were to download any of these songs they would just probably forget about them the next second and and just not even pay them any attention but despite i mean it's not it's not one of those classic albums it's not one of those timeless albums where you listen to it and you say this is great man this is 1979 in a nutshell it is but not in a good way and that's what um it's just as i said it's dated it has not aged well 
But despite that, it really, despite all that and all the negativity that I, I have said about this, this is really not a horrible album because the songs aren't terrible. They're dated, but they are tolerable. They're, I, I would say most of the tracks on this album are at least worth one listen. The album itself is worth one listen, at least a full listen. Give it a one good, full, honest listen. It it doesn't sound like the band was really playing off their influences. It doesn't really sound like they were inspired to write a good album. It doesn't really sound like they were they were putting a lot of effort into this. As I said, they, they basically recruited professional songwriters like Brian Adams to, to write the, some of the material for him. But the end result could have been a lot worse, I think. I've heard other albums that were just boring. These songs, they, they may lack that certain nostalgic charm, but... Individually, most of these songs are tolerable to decent. So I'm going to still give this one a 3 out of 5. Not because it was a great find. Not because it was this earth-shattering listen. But because it j it could have been a lot worse. And it's it's just harmless. It's not... It's not absolutely awful. It's, I, I mean, it's one. It, it's it's just across the board mediocre, middle of the road. I would say give it a fair listen, give it a chance. You pr uh, most people probably aren't gonna like this in this day and age, but I can give you a, I can I can give you a handful of some other CDs that were probably released under the same circumstances for the same reasons later on that are actually much worse. So as far as the actual quality of the music, regardless of whether it holds up well over time or not, I just don't think it's that bad. I, I just don't think it's horrible. So I'm still going to give this one a three out of five. So that's my little rundown of Prism Armageddon. Decent music from... A not so decent year of music. <laughs> Actually, that's why it, that's deserving. It's deserving of a three for that alone. Just the fact that this came out in '79, and there were some really annoying, horrible top forty songs that came out on the international charts in '79. I would, I would actually. I hate the song "My Sharona." I think that is one of the most atrocious. Irritating songs. I can't stand that song. That was 1979. That was a big hit from 79. I hate that song. <laughs> so compared to that, considering that that was one of the big hits of 79, once I compare this, the material that's on this album to that song, that automatically gives us a three out of five. Because I mean, at least it's better than that song, in my opinion. So okay, we're we're we're, we're fair. I'm 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 going even there. Okay, this is a three out of five. Not the best, not the worst. Better than most of what was coming out in that year, though. Go figure. It is what it is. Prism, Armageddon. With some songs written by Brian Adams. There you have it. Catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching.